in our first demonstration, we'll have a, a virtual machine. We'll create a virtual machine. We'll assign to a system assigned identity, and we'll have a storage account. We'll, and we will see how we can use the managed service identity to connect to the storage account without using any username and password or without using storage account connection string or the application settings right this is what this first demonstration will see for this demonstration let's create a virtual machine i'm going to use 2016 data center and I'll provide the detail as requires. Let's say MSI demo that's zero one. I'll provide the appropriate username and password. Admin or is and then you can have the networking and other details specified one thing to <clears throat> note here is as i mentioned while creating the resource you can assign the system identity and once i'm going to click here my virtual machine will have the system identity associated with it but it's not a hard and fast rule that while creating the resource you need to assign the managed identity even after creating the virtual uh, after after creating the virtual machine, I should be able to create the or assign the uh, MSI system assigned identity to my virtual machine or to other resources. This is just to show you how at the runtime or the time of provisioning, you can assign the virtual machine. So once you have the uh, details provided for the virtual machine, if you would like, you can assign the uh, identity and click on create the resources i have already created just for the demonstration this is my virtual machine which i've created and when you go to the virtual machine there is a settings section you have the identity panel and this is what the identity section shows i have created the system identity for this demonstration so if you keep it off and then save it your system identity will will be turn it off it will not be deleted it will be turn it off if i said as i said the life cycle of the identity will remain till the life cycle of this particular object so as long as the object virtual machine object is alive that particular identity is going to be alive even though i'm going to keep it off so if by default if you do not specify the time of creation it will remain on but if you make it on or uh, like even the later stage if you make it on it will create this kind of object id this is just a service principle created in the azure active directory and this is how the managed identity has been created so now any communication which you are making through the msi from this virtual machine so in this case virtual machine is the source so from this source to the destination it should work with the this particular object id right with this service principle now as in in our demonstration we have the virtual machine where we have the application installed on the virtual machine so when i say application i have some of the powershell script running from the virtual machine and those powershell script basically reading and writing the data onto the storage account for the same purpose, I have created this storage account. So this is my storage account, which is right now empty. I do not have anything created here. If you see that there is no container create, created in this storage account. And now, uh, basically, if you are not using uh, the MSI, uh, then and let's say if you are running the application in the .NET application code or any other application code, you use this uh, storage account keys uh, to connect to the uh, storage account so these are the keys like primary key and the secondary key or the connection string so basically i'm just going to give you some hint on the uh, connection string this is how in the application settings you store the 
connection string key right or uh, of the storage account and then you basically change the uh, you connect to the storage account your application connect to the storage account and then uh, you read and write the data to and from this storage account right but now maintaining such internet information as i said it's not a good practice so uh, you might want to store this uh, information in the key vault but even in if i'm going to store this into the key vault uh, there will be a headache uh, when i'm going to rotate the key for example let's say if i'm going to rotate the key uh, let's say if, let me rotate the key now uh, so once i'm going to rotate the key as you can see the key is now different i have got the key starting from k1 when earlier i got the key starting from n2 so i need to go and uh, replace the key wherever i have referred to even though i need to replace the values in the key vault as well so this kind of a maintenance activity will be there for the administrator whereas uh, there is a security risk and also if not if you are using the key vault also there is a maintenance activity even to use the key vault you require the key vault to be connected let's say i'm using the key vault usually in the key vault secret you use the secret of the key vault so again you use some secret key which is ending with the double equal something like that and then you create the key vault secret connection in your application but this service sensible key itself is again a secret which you are maintaining in your application configuration which is again an issue right whereas if you use the manage identity i'll demonstrate how do you use the manage identity and uh, without having a need of in these storage account uh, keys or the, without having need of key vault at all to in order to connect to the storage account from the virtual machine okay let's go and connect to the storage account as i said enabling the authentication or enabling the uh, msi onto the uh, any azure instance is just the authentication part so we are we are we are successfully able to enable the authentication uh, part but at the moment uh, we have not any uh, assigned any roles to the storage account so by by this means that in order to connect to the storage account from any source we need to have the uh, role based access assignment enabled this is what uh, i mean by the authorization piece at the moment we do not have any role assigned here for for that virtual machine so how, how do you do that you basically go ahead and select the appropriate role from the role assignment let's say i say uh, blob contributor so blob contributor basically helps you to read and write data onto the azure container and then you choose the uh, role assignment let's say if you have the user assigned identity then choose the user assigned if not the uh, choose the uh, system assigned identity and then once you choose the system assigned identity you will have these list of services on which you can assign the system assign identity so i'm going to choose the virtual machine so you you'll find the list of available services in service instance on which the uh, on which you have the msi enabled for the virtual machine right once you select that save it uh, your role will be assigned uh, to the storage account and then your storage account would be uh, allow connection from that particular virtual machine instance I'm not going to assign right now. I'll just show you what, uh, how do we, you know, connect to the storage account without the role assignment. What will happen if I try to connect without role assignment? And then what will happen after the role assignment? How does that work just to reflect the case? Let's first of all understand the authentication part. As I said, uh, this is going to be the authentication part. So just to show you the, just to prove the point of authentication part, uh, what we have done is uh, we are trying to invoke and trying to create the access token uh, with the help of, uh, from the virtual machine. So I have, I've already logged into the virtual machine. This is my virtual machine. And now with the help of this IP address, this is the Microsoft backbone IP address. And this IP address allows communication from the, uh, from from the azure service instances to to any uh, any of the azure active directory and it helps you to make a secure connection and by the way this is a non-routable ip address which 
which you can uh, which basically microsoft uses to make a communication if you see that it is going to the identity uh, token to generate the identity and it's trying to connect to the uh, database uh, basically so just to make the database communication but if you want you can connect to the storage account or any other service for, for example if i'm going to connect to this run these services and like this and then if i say okay make communication check i am able to grab the token which proves that uh, i'm using the msi for now okay now let's try and uh, connect to the storage account so for that i have this query written on the and this will help me to uh, connect to the storage account let me go to the story account section. So these are my queries. So I have the query to connect to the storage account. First of all, I'll run this line so that I'm making sure that I'm connecting to the storage account via the TLS 1.0. Recently, Microsoft has announced the update wherein it allows only communication via the TLS. 1.1 onwards so you need to have the tls communication enabled next i am doing the uh, creating the storage account context uh, before i do that what do you need to do here is you need to go and connect to the uh, storage account connect you need to run the connect command so i need to run the connect az account command so I'm running the AZ account command on the AZ module. So if you have the AZ module installed on your PowerShell, then you use the AZ account. If you are using the Azure RM, use the Azure RM. So while connect, you're calling the this particular command, either you need to pass your username password or you can pass this MSI attribute. So once as I have already MSI assigned on this virtual machine, uh, the virtual machine will be able to connect to the subscription. I don't need to pass my own credentials here. So I have the connectivity set up now. Now let me run the con create context command. So what this create context will do is it will create a context on this storage account and it uses the connected account and the in this case connected account is the account basically which we have uh, connected through the msi right so i have created the context now and hopefully it should connect to the uh, next command so now in the next command what we are doing is we are creating a container with name rakesh and we are passing the context here let's see if it works it has failed because and, and this is what we are expecting right because we have not specified any authorization so it's it's failing because of the authorization and we are getting the 403 error it says that the request is not authorized to perform the operation so let me go ahead and assign the appropriate role so we are going to assign the role here So I'll choose service identity as a virtual machine and select the appropriate virtual machine, assign, save. So for that, basically you need to have the appropriate access rights uh, so that you, ca you can assign the, the required role. Assign, after assigning the role, it, it might take some time, uh, sometime it takes maximum up to five minutes. So it might possible that if you are trying to run immediately after that, uh, because to replicate the role on to the target service, uh, so itself takes time. So it might possible that you might face the same issue and you might be thinking that, okay, it's not working. So there may be some problem, which is not the case. So you need to be a bit patient about that and just try after some period of time just to make sure the role assignment is replicated successfully.
as you can see that is still I'm uh, getting the same message which proves that the role assignment is not yet completed I'll pause the video for now and I'll once it is going to be completed maybe a minute or two uh, after that I'll as you can see that uh, the query is run successfully which proves that it took at least a minute to complete the role assignment and now I'm able to connect to the storage account without having any credential I just use the MSI attribute while running the command and with the help of running the attribute command the MSI attribute I'm able to connect to the storage account container and I've successfully created the container here so let's verify that if the container has been created here so I'll navigate back to the containers and I'll see that this container has been created just a moment ago and let's run one more time this command just to make sure it's working fine we'll run it and create one more container here so let's run again as you can see that one more time I have successfully able to create the container and which has been replicated here so this proves the demonstration of how do you connect to uh, the storage account with the help of MSI from any service in this case we have used the service as a virtual machine and we have connected through the through the uh, PowerShell but it doesn't matter even though if you are using any programming language such as .NET Core or Python or Java or any other language which has been supported you can connect to the uh, target service with the help of MSI yep I hope uh, this makes sense to you just from the understanding of the MSI configuration 